Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I will be going over Google Docs, basically debunking the application of Google Docs that is through Google Chrome. Google Docs is basically like a Word Docs, it's like a Microsoft Word Docs, it's like a open office Docs, it's basically a typical typing platform. There are two ways to access it, you can go docs google.com and I'll bring you to this page here or you can use the little waffle like we have been you can scroll down here google docs is right here you can click on that or you can go docs.new and it'll open up a brand new google docs document which we will get to this in just a minute Alrighty, so we are here now, and I'm just going to basically be debunking this very quickly. Here's your recent. It's the same just as the Google Slides, um, who they're owned by, how you view them, their order on when you last saw them, a way to open them. You can click here and here to see your Google Docs. You can click here, and you can look down and basically see you can go to your docs you can go to your sheets your slides your forms you have your settings you can go to your drive and see them there which there will be a separate video for google drive all right and then lastly you can search up if you know the document name you can search them up you can change the profile you're under if you're looking for a specific document you can look at your template history which trust me there is tons of templates because of what this is used for. All right, now it's time to actually debunk the actual Google Doc. We can name it, so I'm gonna name it Tutorial Docs. And say you decide to change the name later, you can always come up here and click on it. You can star it, but basically it's like a little nifty thing in your Google Drive, it's easy to find. You can move it to a certain area, so say I wanna put it under YouTube creation stuff, I can put it there. I can see that all the changes have been upgraded to my docs. I can see when I last edited it. I have a help button. I have comments, so if I want to, I can comment on anything here as either a mental note or I can have someone else comment if they're editing or revising my work. I can share this docs with a meet call. I can share it which this is where people get a little confused. Like I say, in most of my videos, sharing is quite tricky for most people. It's just because of how they word it and kind of how they have it set up. It just, it's a little bit tricky for some. But anyways, we can share tutorial docs. You can either type in the email and then you can send them a note. You can do all that fun jazz. You can either, or you can either share the link with anyone you can change their status, but do keep in mind, if you keep them as editor, they can edit anything on your doc. Just keep that in mind. Along with this, you can copy the link and you can send it out to people you choose to. That is another option for you. Alrighty. Now that that's been kind of debunked, that basic topic, this is just a way to access more things. It's not too fancy, nothing much. You can save things to your keep as reminders. You have your explore option. And yeah. So file, this is pretty straightforward. You can either make a new doc, you can open up a separate doc, you can make a copy of the docs. You can share it with others or publish it on the web. You can email this file to anyone or to your collaborators. You can download it. Downloading will download the entire docs, depending on what you use. Some of these might be better than others. Um, you can rename it, which there's two separate ways, which I explained already. The other way to rename your docs, you can move it in your drive. You can add a shortcut in your drive. You can trash it. You can look at the version history. You can make it available offline. So if I do this, I can also come back in here and re-click this and remove the offline access to online as well. Offline access just means you can access it without internet. You can look at the details of the document, change the language if you need to, 
change your page setup, which this is more so just your margins, your orientation, apply, your paper size, your page color. And page lists, this is kind of just blows it up, meaning there's no page really. You can't actually print it if you have it in this view. Um, and you can print it as well, which is pretty straightforward. If you click on details, you can see the location you drive, who it's owned by, when you last modified it, who the creator is, when it was created, I mean. And that's pretty straightforward. You can change how you're viewing it as a... You can change your view of it as an editor, a suggester, or a viewer if you're trying to view it in different aspects. Here we have our headers. So this is like your summary. You can add a summary to basically state what this is all about. Then you can add your headers, which is just kind of a quick, easy way to get around your docs, which we will, I will go over. This is kind of just a debunk video, so it, it's not gonna be it's gonna be explanatory, but not. It's just kind of a zip through it all. Um, under edit, you have your same basic options as you would in Google Slides: find and replace, select doll, paste with a formatting, paste, redo, undo. You can view it. So you have your mode: show print outline, show ruler outline, show outline, equation to the wall, show section breaks, and full screen it. You full screen it. It looks like this. If you want to get out of full screen. Click escape. Your view, that's kind of just what that's all about. Then insert is quite the quite the headache it can be. So you can insert images, tables, drawings, charts, horizontal lines, emojis, smart chips, drop down, footnote. So a footnote, I'm gonna go over this now. So so a footnote is just basically at the bottom of the page stating what you're on. You can add in header, headers, which this is kind of just, so say you want to add your page numbers. You can add a page number at your header or your footer, depends on. And yeah, say you want to do page, but the page, like the actual word page with it. You can change the font. This is throughout everything. And change the size, which is allowed. You can bold, italic, and underline it if you would like. You can put it on this side, this side, in the middle, that side. Typically, it's on this side. That's just a little debunk. The insert, there's a lot here. There's watermarks, headers, and footers. Page numbers, we just kind of went over. Break. So page break is kind of just, there's nothing really fancy to it. Like I said, nothing fancy to that. You can link things, bookmark things, and add in a table of contents. And of course, don't have to that's choice I won't go over table of contents today but that's just personal choice that's dependent on what you're doing you can insert equations and special characters so like we have all of these special characters that you don't have in your keyboard formatting that's just your text paragraph styles alignment your line spacing Columns, like so if you want two columns or three columns, like I can go the, the, see it'll only let me go that far, so if I go all the way down, see now I'm in the second column, now I'm in the third. That's kind of just how that works. Which is very useful honestly at times but most times people just use and choose to use this um there's page numbers page orientation whole document lands so you can choose to put in a landscape view or a portrait view all depends on your personal preference on how you want to print it 
Okay, so since we're in landscape view, we're going to insert a chart. You can insert a bar graph. And once you insert the bar graph, you can actually click on it. Click these three dots, size orientation, adjustments, and all image options. You can change a lot of things. It's very customizable. You can open up the source. So this is what it looks like, realistically. So we have period one and period two. So if I wanted to, I could change this to period eight and period four. This graph will not change because it would change this graph here. And then how you'd click on this, you'd have to click here. You would have to click copy chart, click here, and make sure you link to the spreadsheet if you ever have to change anything. That's how you kind of do the graphs. It's the same with the column, the line, and the pie. It's the exact same thing. You just kind of have to flip out that information. You can put in a horizontal line if you're trying to break it up. Emojis, well, they shouldn't be too hard for you to insert on your own. They can be quite fun. You can put in little chips and then you can book meetings and stuff like this. That's what the chips do. Um, drop downs. Basically, drop down area. You can choose which option you want. Kind of useful in assessments. Um, footnotes we already went over. Um, what else do we have here? We have building blocks, we have mean notes, email drafts, product roadmap, kind of those things. Special characters, you kind of just click on them and then they get put in. You can do equations. So that's like a whole section. If you're a math person, you would know how to type out your equations. And that is the gist of this little section here. That's just inserts. Um, formats, there's not much. Tools is basically just, so you can check the word count, how many pages, word count, characters, characters excluding spaces, and display word count while typing, you can choose to do, which we'll just kind of put it in this little corner here. Which, if you're trying to write a maximum words and you can't go over that, that's a great way to do it. Um, citations is a way to cite your sources. And you can add citations. It walks you through the whole process. Very simple, very easy. Explore linked objects, your dictionary, translate document, voice typing. So you can talk and it'll type it for you. You have your notification settings, your preferences, and your accessibilities. Those are pretty standard. And you also have your personal dictionary and your spelling and grammar. You have your extensions, per usual. Help, we kind of went over it just if you need some help. Um, if you want to link something, like slides.new, you can apply that link there. Or if you have a word, click here. You want to cite something there you can highlight it click Control k or you can highlight it and click the link button and go slides.new and then apply it highlighting is pretty simple you can insert images from the web like if i type random i'll just get a whole bunch of Random things. See, and then I can just scale it, change where it is. Um, 
have fixed position on the page, meaning it will not move. So like if I am typing and I want to write around it, like just like that, this is just not going to move. I'll just kind of type around it. And then another thing is people ask you how to insert a table. So you can insert a table as big as the page. So it's a 20 by 20 you're allowed. I'm just going to put in a 4 by 3. Fun part is you can do a lot of things with these tables. They're just kind of like a little fun thing to do. You can add check boxes in. And you can click off the check boxes once you're done. Bullet point and numbering is pretty standard. And that is a very fast debunk. You can create a drawing using this. So basically, I say I want a square and I want to have. So I want dimensions on it because it's a math thing. So I'll have six centimeters. I uh, will say four centimeters. That is probably very incorrect, but see, it's all there. You can re-edit that image if you'd like. And then you can ask questions. You can click tab to indent. That's a little trick. Tab is to indent your paragraphs. And that is a, that's, this is just my major debunk. You can put the horizontal line again if you want. Honestly, it's basically like any old typical document. And that is how, what, and what Google Docs is. If you want a header, so you can click header one, A. That becomes a header there. And then say I want a header here, header to the, and like, then you can go to the and they, because header two would technically be under head, the main header. I kind of muck that up. And then we'll say I want a title down here. If I want to put a title here today, we'll say, like, It'll like be bigger. It's just kind of like just how they're displayed. So you'll have your title. Typically, you have header one underneath your title, and they kind of just like downsize from there. And then you'll just have your subtitles and your normal text, which is very helpful when you're creating very professionalized documents. And that's my debunk. You can bold, italic, underline, change the color, highlight, increase text size, decrease it, change the font size. And that is, yeah, numbers, bullet points, the whole nine yards is all here, and there's a lot you can do with this app. I hope this really fast, really quick debunk was helpful for you and can help you in your journey. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the um, headers, they transfer over, and if I was to make a footer here today... Say, for instance, it'll carry on throughout all of it. But yeah, and then you also have your zoom. I don't know if I said that. You do have a zoom in option to look at everything, which is fun. Anyways, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and this debunk wasn't too fast or too quickly for you. And I hope this basically help clarify things on how to do some things and just generally make things easier. Anyways, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you around. Bye!